Joining me now from Edmonton is Academy Award-winning actor, author, and political activist Jane Fonda. And beside her, a face uh, also familiar to people in Canada, Grand Chief Stuart Phillip of the Union of BC Indian Chiefs. Nice to see you both. Appreciate you both making the time. Thank you for having us. And, and afternoon. Ms. Fonda, I'll, I'll, I'll start with you because I've spoken to the chief many times before, but of course we'll, we'll, we'll ask his opinion as well. Um, our, our government, as you know, recently signed off on two pipeline projects. Uh, there's another one still under for consideration. What, what are you hoping that your visit does uh, to Canada? Are you hoping to stall or stop those pipeline decisions? Stop. Stop. There is consensus among climate scientists around the world that we, if we're going to stave off utter catastrophe, that we cannot allow any more fossil fuel extraction. No new pipelines, no new drilling. What's there is there, but nothing new. And, you know, that's what the Prime Minister agreed to when he was in Paris, by supporting the Paris uh, Climate Summit. He also agreed to honor the treaties, um, the UN agreement with the indigenous people of Canada. None of that has happened. And um, it's the same reason that I was at Standing Rock. We can't allow any new extraction. And I'm hoping that by being here and getting media to, to come as a result of my being here, that we can raise the issue and mobilize Canadians to stop it. Well, well, well two points. Uh, the, the oil is coming out of the ground anyway, is what corporations in Alberta would say to you, whether there is a pipeline uh, or not, because there are already pipelines in place. This would just allow them to more capacity to send the oil out. And the second part about the UN Declaration on Indigenous Rights, it doesn't, in fact, give Indigenous people uh, the right to veto a project. So what would you say to those points? When you put the oil, the gas, the whatever it is that you're extracting into pipelines and trains and trucks, you transport it over land and you burn it, there, is, um, there are dangerous emissions that, that result because of that and we have to cap those emissions, we have to stop that from happening and that's what we're asking for. And we're very, very disappointed in your Prime Minister for approving new pipelines because he knows that that runs counter to what was agreed to in Paris. But but you are aware, I'm sure, that as well as doing that, the Prime Minister has also uh, a climate change deal signed with most of the provinces in this country to impose a carbon tax on them. So he's not doing one without the other. Uh, but when you look, and, and I have, and I wish that I had it here to show you, if you look at a graph of the climate damage, the contamination that would be caused by the new pipelines, as opposed to the so-called mitigation of that damage done by all of the things combined that the Prime Minister is agreeing to, that's about this. It, it doesn't even begin to offset the damage done by new, by new extraction, not even begin. Okay, let me bring in the Chief, if you don't mind, Ms. Fonda. Uh, Chief, uh, Chief Phillip, what, 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 do you, what do you, how does a visit by someone as well known as Jane Fonda help your cause and, and what are you hoping that uh, her presence does to a conversation that we are having but that the government has, has very much sort of given the green light to? Well, I think uh, Ms. Fonda's presence is, um, is uh, hugely helpful in elevating this discussion, this public dialogue and creating a greater awareness with respect to the multitude of issues that are, are part and parcel of this uh, issue. The underlying issue, of course, is climate change and global warming, which is global in scope. It's bigger than Fort McMurray. It's bigger than Alberta. And it's, um, you know, it involves um, the entire world. But here in Canada, the, the pipeline issue is uh, an enormous issue. Uh, we do have the uh, UN declaration, the issue of free, prior, and informed consent. We have um, countless Supreme Court decisions that not only lay down the rigorous standards of consultation, but the recent Chilcotin decision in British Columbia has said that we need to move from mere consultation to a consent-based decision-making progress. Uh, that hasn't happened in spite of a lot of commitments made by uh, the Trudeau government during the last federal election. Uh, he's reneged on all of those commitments. We're deeply disappointed 
He uh, committed to overhaul the National Energy Board approval process. He committed to overhaul the Canadian environmental assessment process. In fact, he went to the extent of saying no major resource development projects should be approved until that work was completed. Well, we all know that hasn't happened. Uh, as we sit here, I think there's somewhere in the neighborhood of eight lawsuits that have been filed against Kinder Morgan's Trans Mountain Pipeline proposal. There are more in the pipe. It'll become an extremely litigious battle. Mm -hmm. We won the Enbridge Northern Gateway fight. There were, I think, 19 lawsuits at the end of the day, and it was the Federal Court of Appeal that quashed the federal approval of that project. So the battle continues. Uh, let me let me go back to you, Ms. Fonda. You're, you are under some criticism for your visit there. Um, as, as you well know, Fort McMurray is um, not doing very well. It's rebuilding from a massive fire last year. The price of oil is down. People are unemployed. So for you to be there and to speak out against the development of the oil sands, many people view that as offensive and, and kicking them when they're down. The, the, the pain that people in Fort McMurray are going through, and I, and I understand that California has had some massive damaging fire, and uh, we watched what was happening to Fort McMurray with tremendous compassion and pain um, last year. And I, and I feel for the, for the people who work in the tar sands who've been laid off because of the drop in the price of oil. In other words, those are not sustainable jobs. This is not a sustainable industry. What we're saying is, Everyone will benefit, the indigenous people, the workers, men and women in, in Fort McMurray and everywhere in the world who are working on the extractive industries. They will be helped by making a transition that is well managed and compassionate to renewables but, but and would investment you, in infrastructure and yeah. in housing. Yeah. But would you suggest, Ms. Fonda, that, that Canada just leave the resources in the ground at this stage, that we walk away from an industry that is economically supporting our country? We're saying that we're not walking away. We're saying no new, no new extraction. That's what experts all over the world are saying. It's what was said at Paris, no new ex extractions. If you're in a hole, stop digging. We're in a hole. Um, there is another way to go. It's been proven successful in countries around the world. Ontario created 35,000 jobs by moving towards renewable. It can be done, and it can be done right away. Um, the oil companies are lying to its workers. And so while, while we have tremendous compassion for what's happening in Fort McMurray and in Alberta in general, look at what's happening to the indigenous people. Yes, there's something like 9% unemployment for the oil workers, 90% unemployment in indigenous communities. Uh, well, I was just going to ask you about, about your uh, incoming president, uh, President-elect Donald Trump, because as you know, he has a different, completely different viewpoint than you on the environment. In fact, is promising, uh, saying to Canada yes. that the Keystone Pipeline might be back on the table. So why not spend time in the United States trying to influence uh, the direction of your new president rather than our country? It's what I'm going to be spending every ounce of energy, every penny that I earn. Every moment of my time when I'm not working is going to be spent on trying to defeat every single thing that Donald Trump tries to do. It's a catastrophe what's happened in the United States. We have a perpetrator in chief now sitting on a golden throne, promising all kinds of things to the unemployed and the barely making it men and women in the United States, and he's not going to be able to fulfill any of his promises to them, and there's going to be people hurting a lot worse because of what happened in the election. And we have to stand together with them, and we have to fight. Just as I'm talking about, you know, having happened here, we have to fight for policies that will help the people that are hurting the most. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Jane Fonda, nice to speak with you. Chief Philip, always nice to see you, sir. We'll Thank speak you. again. Thank you.